Hello and welcome to another trip report. This time on a Greater Anglia intercity train from Norwich to London. Um, well, what I do in this video, I show you the railway station of Norwich, show you the trains and some views from the train. London Liverpool Street, where this train terminates, I will feature that in another video. And um, it will also be on a Greater Anglia train, by the way. For now, I hope you like this video. If you do so, give me a thumbs up. And if you like to see more train, mainly train, sometimes ferry and sometimes long distance bus videos, but videos where I tell you more about a more sustainable way of transportation, just hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already. For now, let's just roll the intro. Norwich is a category B railway station. What means it is a regional interchange railway station. I arrived here with a train of EMR, so East Midland Railways, that took me from Manchester. This is a terminal station and therefore the layout is pretty easy. But before we explore the railway station itself, let's take a closer look just outside the railway station. At the front there's a taxi stand, a drop off zone for passengers by car and a parking spot. The railway station itself doesn't feel that big, but I really like the railway station building. Most trains that do call here are being operated by Greater Anglia. However, you will also find some East Midland railway trains. This railway station is being managed by Greater Anglia. And of course, Network Rail is the owner of this railway station. At the moment you enter the railway station from the front, you'll find some vending machines for tickets and right next to that there's also a ticket office. Closer to the railway tracks, you'll find this central hall within the railway station and around here there are more shops and railway related services. Of course, there are plenty of simple seats within the railway station hall. However, a little bit more at the side at the front, there's also this waiting room inside. Within the main railway station hall, and I didn't put this well on camera, there's also a public water tap. And this is something I found at more railway stations of Greater Anglia. So you can refill your bottle with drinking water instead of buying a new plastic bottle. What is way better for the environment of course. Well, I don't think I need to explain a whole lot about this railway station. It's pretty straightforward and personally I really like this railway station building. Information about departing trains is clearly given at these screens and of course you also find access gates like in most bigger British railway stations. For this journey I was traveling with the use of a Brit Rail Pass. In most situations it didn't work to open the access gate with my QR code. However, there's also staff available to assist you at most British railway stations. At the beginning of all platforms, clear screens will host your route information, so you can double check you're at the right spot. Even though these departure screens are really clear, they didn't always work that well with my camera. This here is the train that took me here from Manchester, more of that in another video. For now, let's take a look at the exterior of our train for today. What is a British Rail Class 745 or a Stadler Flirt? These trains do exist of 12 cars per unit and do have a total capacity of 745 seats, of which 624 are in standard class and 80 in first class. The top speed is 100 miles per hour, what is 160 km per hour, and these are full electric trains. At the side, letters will indicate what carriage you find there. In most European countries this will be mentioned with numbers, but this is not in the UK. LED screens at the front, the back and at lots of places at the side of these trains will indicate very basic route information. Apart from that, at this site you will find some special icons that will indicate special dedicated zones, like the quiet zone or the bicycle area. Even though there's a small dining car, this has not been marked very clear at the site of these trains. However, first class is marked very clear. Apart from the extra yellow stripe above the windows, what indicates exactly where you find the first class, 
right next to the entrance doors of the section where you find the first class, you will find the number one. In Britain, second class isn't always mentioned because it's basically called standard class. And that makes sense in a way. The exterior is not that special and actually quite minimal. In a way, I really like it because there's no distraction and the special dedicated zones of which you won't find a lot are clearly marked as well. For now, let's take a closer look at the interior of these trains. And I will start off with the first class. At the moment I started recording, the train was pretty much empty, so I was not disturbing any other passengers. First class comes in a 2x1 configuration, like in most European long distance trains. There's a mix of both airline style seats and seats that do face each other. In that case there's a bigger table in between. The amount of leg space is pretty good, but the folding table in the seat in front of you in the first class for the airline style seats, it's really small. There's one plug per seat and there's also one USB outlet per seat. Seats do have a sunscreen and a reading light, but these seats can't be reclined, what is a kind of a downside, especially for first class products. Seat reservations will be displayed at small screens at the side of these trains. And there are small luggage tracks within the first class as well. Of course, you can use the overhead luggage tracks as well. And at some points where these seats do come in a composition that they face each other, you can store some luggage between the back ends of the seats as well. At some other spots, there will be garbage cans between the back ends of the seats. The dining car and toilet have been clearly marked within these trains. It's not a really true dining car, but it's a pickup point. I really like it that there is something like this. Of course, there are several toilets within these trains, and this is one of the regular toilets. This is the toilet in the first class, so it will be first class doing business, right? As you can see, at some spots between the back ends of the seats, there are some garbage cans as well. And between the first and the second class, you will find the dining car. It was closed when the train was still standing still, but I really like this place. The prices are relatively affordable as well. The dining car is not a place where you go to for having a full dinner and where you can have a nice sit and drink. It's really just a pickup point. Close to the dining car, there's this bigger accessible toilet that can also be turned into a nursery space for babies. The toilet itself is pretty simple and straightforward, and most important, it's clean. Well, I guess no train tour is complete without doing a toilet review. And well, this is the second one for this video. And as you can see, it can be turned into a nursery space for babies. Close to this toilet, a little bit more back towards the area, what's officially called the dining car, there are some accessible spots as well. By the way, as you maybe already noticed, this train does have barrier-free access. Second class is in the UK often called standard class. And standard class comes in a 2x2 two two configuration. Behind the back of some seats there is some space for luggage as you just saw over there. Within these trains there is a mix of both airline style seats and seats that do face each other. Somehow I felt like closer towards the dining car there were more seats facing each other. For luggage, there are special luggage racks within these trains, but of course you can also use the overhead luggage racks that are all over the train. Between the back ends of some seats, you can also store some luggage. At some spots, just like in the first class, you will find garbage cans between the back ends of some seats as well. The airline style seats in standard class do have a really small tray table in the seat in front. It's not suitable to work from a laptop from here. Under the luggage tracks, right at the window, you'll find coat hangers. And right at the same spot as in the first class, there are displays that will host both re reservation information and also the seat numbers. In second class, there's one power plug and USB socket per two seats. And it's located between the seats. The seats that do face each other do have a big table between the seats. These trains are relatively long, but it's really easy to see through these trains. What might be an extra thing for safety? Of course, CCTV is also available. Overall, I think these trains are relatively good, 
But the first class products, I think this can be improved a bit by making seats reclinable. In carrots D, there are some spots for bikes as well, as you can see over here. I don't know if you need to reserve bikes or not, and even if I know, this might be changing in the near future. The best thing is to look this up at the website of Greater Anglia. Screens throughout the train will not only host information about the route, but also on how busy different sections of the train are. I really like this, and if a part is really busy, you can just move to another part of the train. For my ride, it was in general pretty quiet. However, I traveled more with these trains and mainly on the section Manning Tree London. This as a connection on the Stena Line ferry that goes from Harrods International to Hoek of Holland in the Netherlands. And back then it was quite busy though. Overall, I think these trains are good for the travel time they have, what is about 1 hour and 50 minutes for a distance of 96 miles or 154.5 kilometers. In general, it's easy to upgrade to first class, at least for my ride in the weekend. For 10 pounds only extra, you can take a seat in first class and, well, you can upgrade your valid ticket to a first class ticket. I don't know what rules will be applied when you're traveling in the peak hours. Just ask the railway staff. By the way, meals and drinks are not included at the moment you're traveling in first class within these trains. It's general known that trains are an environmental friendly way of transportation. Of course I can say that, or I can show numbers that show the environmental impact if you're traveling on this route by train or car. Planes are on this distance, no alternative. What is a pity though is that long distance buses are not included in this graph. Before I'll show you some views from the train, this is a network map of Greater Anglia. I'll be taking the only intercity train on this route, what is from Norwich to London Liverpool Street. Now we're talking about maps anyway. In the description of this video on YouTube, there's a link to a map and on that map you can find all trip reports I did for this channel. The lines do indicate the routes, the train, ferry and bus icons do indicate the railway station, ferry terminal or bus station reviews. Of course I'm making more videos, so more lines will be added to this map. This channel is mainly focusing on long distance and international train, sometimes ferry and sometimes long distance bus travel to show you what it's like and what you can expect if you're traveling on a more sustainable way of transportation. For now, I'll show you some views from the train on this route. I did not film the views for the entire route because it got dark at the last section of the route. If you are really curious about that section of the route, there will be a video on the boat train from London Liverpool Street to Harrods International on this channel as well, so stay tuned if you want to see that.
So that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. Um, I'm right now at London Liverpool streets. Um, this is where the trains to, um, well, from Norway uh, to terminate. I will feature this railway station in another video. And that's where I'll take a special boat train that will go to Harris International from here. Um, well, I'll tell you more about the station and that train in that video. For now, I hope you liked it. If you do so, give me a thumbs up. And if you made it all the way to this point in the video and you haven't subscribed already, just hit the subscribe button. You might like to see some more of these kinds of videos. See you on my next video.